and there was these few people who left and they had the choice either they would go with their small little boat who, which which was for surviving and they would travel to a close by place uh, which was a, an island but this island <clears throat> sorry this island had a reputation for cannibalism this is the 19th century okay people didn't know uh, many things about many remote places they thought that this island was filled with people who ate other people <laughs> And therefore, they didn't chose. They chose not to go to this island, which was very close, and they chose to go to uh, the coast. They go to to another country, which was very far. I believe they went all the way back to the United States, and that was such a long trip that they ran out of food, and eventually, they some of these people went nearly crazy, and they started to eat each other just because they made a choice based on fear from the start. Eventually their fears were realized and instead of being eaten by the cannibal, uh, by, can, by, eat, <laughs> by cannibalists on that island, they actually ate each other. <laughs> it's a very sad story, but it shows how fe irrational fears can sometimes cause us to make the wrong choices and actually cause us to actually realize the very things that we are afraid of. So I believe it was an American president who said, the only thing we have to fear is fear itself, right? But some fear is good. There is the uh, useful fear that sometimes helps us. Of course, it's not stupid to be afraid of a snake. It's not stupid to be afraid of a wolf or a, a wild dog which you might meet sometimes. It's not, that is, that is very wise to be afraid of those, those things because they are dangerous. It's also good to be afraid of the consequences of your own actions. If you, you don't want to do any wrong to other people, you are afraid that you will do wrong, you don't want to do that. Maybe you don't want to use the word afraid, but still there's a, a little bit of fear in there and that's actually a wise kind of fear. Uh. There may be a lot of fears in our daily life which are less wise or can be wise or not. Some people might be afraid for their job, some people are afraid for their reputation or for embarrassment in the group. Some people are afraid for death or suffering in the afterlife. All of these, they might have rational aspects or irrational. If we base them on greed, hatred and delusion, you know, then it becomes a problem in our life. It's, it's very rational to be afraid that you cannot take care of your family, but it's also uh, wise to know that there will always be ups and downs in life. So we shouldn't be attached too much to our current economical circumstances and it will go up and down sometimes. So it's, 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 some fears are good and sometimes it not depends on whether they are based on greed, hatred and delusion or not. So that's why meditation helps us so much because it helps us to see where our actions are based on. It helps us to be more self-reflective that's where meditation is so good. Even those people who are not very self-reflected by nature will be find it easier to know their own motivations when they meditate regularly. And there's also a teaching in Buddhism that says that we might have different motivations to do wrong, to, to refrain from doing wrong. Just now I mentioned that we might be afraid of what happens when we do something wrong that is uh, sort of like uh, uh, you don't want to do hurt any other people, right? Sometimes we don't want to do wrong because we don't want to hurt somebody. It may also be that we don't want to do something wrong that we get caught for by the police. <laughs> but there may also be certain things which we don't want to do because of ourselves, our own principles. We know that 
there's an expression in Buddhism that says there is not, not a thing in the world that remains unseen. There's not a thing in the world which remains hidden. This is an expression in, in Buddhism. Because everything in the world is, uh, is always visible. And uh, one teacher, our deputy abbot in Thailand, he explained it as we have uh, everything in the world will be seen. If, people are, if there are no people around us to see it, uh, then he says, then maybe some uh, beings that we cannot see, like the angels, the devas or something, they can see us. And even if you don't believe in that, the very fact that you are your own, your own witness already means that there is no secret in the world. Because everything we do, we, when we are a witness to our own thoughts, to our own, to our own actions, we know that nothing is really hidden. Yeah. So uh, to, when we are deciding in life to, to do something, to avoid doing something wrong, we might have different motivations. But the highest motivation in Buddhism is to avoid doing something wrong because we believe it's the nature of, of life that when we do something wrong, it will have negative consequences. This is sometimes uh, we call it uh, uh, doing good or avo avoiding wrong based on the Dhamma. So rather than basing your actions on, what you, on other people or on yourself, it's the very nature. Can you hear me? You okay? <coughs> Yeah. Okay. Um, so, right. So, some people might yeah. decide that they want to avoid wrong because of other people. The other people might decide because of their own principles. They don't want to do wrong. But some people might decide it's the very nature of dhamma, it's the very nature of of goodness in the world, and the nature of reality that we should avoid wrong. So. For example, if you take uh, the example of uh, meditating, uh, you want, you'd like to do some meditation and uh, some people might want to meditate to show off, but in generally we meditate because of our, because it helps ourselves. We find that it helps ourselves, it helps, it, 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 we, we know that if, the more we meditate, the happier we become. This is like, uh, basing your decisions on Dhamma rather than basing them on the other person or basing them on yourself, your own uh, wishes, but basing them on Dhamma or on the, the Buddhist principles of reality. But the same way when you are, suppose you're, you're parking your car somewhere, somewhere and you know that if you don't pay your parking ticket, nobody will notice. You know it's a place where the police doesn't check. But the fact that, but you know that even if nobody sees, you are your own witness. Therefore, you still decide to pay your ticket. That is an example of doing, avoiding wrong based on yourself rather than the other. But there's also a way, a way we can avoid wrong by basing it on the Dhamma, saying that every time we, we do not uh, pay for something or we do not honestly have an honest exchange or have an honest way of getting something, it will always come back to us. This is the nature of life, the nature of reality. So we do not need to wait for a person to be there as a witness or, uh, but we know that it's the nature of reality that whenever we do something good, it will come back to us. Whenever we do some, avoid something wrong, it will one day come back to us. This is the nature of reality. So you could say that uh, in that sense, there may sometimes be also a sense of shame or a sense of fear of not wanting to do something, but it's based on wisdom. So not all fear is wrong in Buddhism, but many fears are. So I have to say that because when we talk about morality, this will always be a question in people's minds, you know, how to deal with fear. Should we be afraid or not? We have to say that some people in their own religious traditions, for example, the religion, the tradition of Christianity is uh, sometimes associated with causing fear in other people and then uh, persuading them to do good based on fear.
but that is not uh, how we should study about right view or study about morality. It's, it should be based on wisdom or on the Dhamma. Okay, we have um, one question before ending yes. today. 